Did I put too much on your plate? <laughs> no, sweets. I'm booked all the way through until tomorrow at about four. Um, when will you be able to? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Let's negotiate. Um, I'm going to say Monday by 5 p.m. Pacific. Bueno. Because I know that that's true. Barbara's writing that down. She's going to hold me accountable. Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific. That way I can get it earlier too, and you'll be thrilled. But if you get it Monday, you're not going to be having a poofy fit. Okay, great. So Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific. Pacific. Okay. All right. Come back. So the higher up you get on the, do you want us to close those? Okay, don't suffer. Can you close these blinds? Thanks. Um, the higher up you get on the rapport pyramid, the more potent. All right. So at the bottom, all we're doing with rapport, so people sometimes think that this is evil. We're not doing this stuff to be evil, okay? So just give me your little pinky swear that we're gonna use these techniques to foster safety, belonging, and mattering, right? We're not gonna use these, you know, to pick up women in a bar, okay? <laughs> Whenever I speak to groups of entrepreneurs, men are like, will this work? When I'm, I'm like, no, gross! I'm not teaching you! Okay, so, <laughs> so here's the thing. We're using these rapport techniques to foster safety, belonging, and mattering to help people connect with us and not be so defended, scared, whatever. First, posture and gesture mirroring. This is really easy, but you're not going to be obvious about it. So if you're at a meeting with a person, you know, you've, you've heard this before. They're leaning back, you know, you lean back and you cross your arms, but you don't go, ooh, ooh. And then they go like this, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, I mean, don't be weird, okay? <laughs> Pause, <laughs> breathe. We're trying to mirror them because subconsciously the message we're sending is, we're the same. We belong together. I'm not scary, okay? So posture and gesture is really easy. Vocal, tone, pace, pitch. We have one client who was a prospect who would kind of hyperventilate when he got excited. He'd be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. so of course, when I was in the selling process, oh, blah, 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 blah. and he's like, oh, yeah, you totally understand me, you know? And I'm like, well, I do. And, I'm, you know, I'm, and then later I said, you know, in the sales process, I was using vocal mirroring. And he's like, oh, great. Okay, I'm gonna use that with my clients. So vocal is helpful, especially if you've got telesales people. So with those sales reps over the phone, we did lots of work on vocal mirroring. The next one, keyword, awesome. Keyword's easy, and a lot of these first three things, we naturally, if we're kind of coming from wanting to connect with people, you'll find that you naturally probably do a lot of these first three things. Keywords are if someone says, we've got to drive this home, you say yes, you know? So to drive this home, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of the conversation, so we're going to drive this home. We're going to drive it home together, you know, blah, 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 okay? Now, sensory system is visual, kinesthetic, or auditory. Yes, there's olfactory and gustatory, but most people don't process the world through their mouth or their nose, okay? <laughs> Thank God. Um, so most of us will experience the world, we'll, we'll say, I feel, I feel good about that. I, I need to get my arms around it, okay? That's a kinesthetic, touchy person. So you use the, well, you know, yeah, let's get our arms around this. How's that feel to you? You know? So we're start gonna use kind of feeling words. If they're saying, ah, I see where you're going. Say, so do you have a good view of that? You know, we're using visual words. So listen, pay attention. This is why if we're really focused and we're really present, we will understand exactly what their sensory system is so we can then step into it, okay? Auditory guys, oh, you know, I resonate with that. That sounds good to me. Okay, so start to kind of look at, listen, feel, where are your people? Now, I don't have time to do meta programs. Meta programs is about an hour and a half. But I want you guys to think about, when you get this, think about how the people in your world process information. Are they running towards things or are they cautious and they're kind of gonna step back and assess? Are they, oh, give me lots of possibilities, or uh, 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 I want five steps to complete such and such. The procedural people, you're going to freak them out if you give them too many choices. They don't want choice. They want to process. General specific, do we want give people, to give people the high level? We had a CFO who kept going into specifics with the CEO. The CEO said, I think i got to fire this guy. I can't stand the way he talks. Oh, God, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, net it out, dude. So I talked to the CFO, and I'm like, let's go over the meta programs of the CEO. Let's keep our job, OK? So we go through the meta programs of the CEO. The CFO starts talking to the CEO in his meta programs. Three months later, the CEO calls me and says, I think that's one of the best hires I ever made. 
I did not remind him of the fact that he almost fired the guy. That's, I think that's one of the best hires I ever made. Six months later, the CFO was on the president track. Six months later, the CFO goes, oh my god, the CEO just said, you know what, why don't I just make you president of this division? Okay, let's lay out the track. So, needless to say, speak in somebody else's language. It's not about us. This is a news flash. It's harsh, but it never was about us. Sorry, okay? You're the leader. That means that you basically have to serve others. <laughs> Everyone thinks, when I get to the top of the pyramid, it will be so great. No, you will have to disappear. The more you disappear into the person you're talking to, the better they receive your message. That's how you close sales faster. That's how you get more motivation and alignment. That's how you get those prospects to close faster. That's how you get more emotion in your brand, okay? Two more, and then we're going to move on, because I want you guys to know stances. Reactive, proactive, just like they sound. You know, is someone out there charging ahead, or is someone, oh, I'm going to sit back and analyze and check it out and be cautious. Internal, external. Internal people are harder to manage. Internals are often the, um, the engineers, the accountants. They know they're doing a good job because they're smart. They know, okay? <laughs> Salespeople, easier to manage. They're external. Give me treats and I will perform. Ooh, more treats, yay. Oh, I didn't get treats. Oh, my world is falling apart. Here's how to get some more treats. Ooh, okay, okay. Sameness difference, tolerance for change. Sameness and difference is tolerance for change. Please don't say to people, this is a big, huge, exciting change. They will go into their limbic system. They will go into fight, flight, fear. They're not excited about it. It's not happy. Do you guys remember New Coke? It was awful. It was a disaster. It's New Coke. I don't want New Coke. I liked Coke already, <laughs> right? They spent millions, probably tens of millions, fixing that botch. Then they said, oh, it's Coke. It's the same Coke you've always loved. Just there's cherry added if you want it. You don't have to have it, though, OK? Oh, it's Coke Zero. The bad calories, they're taken away. Bad calories gone. Still, it's your Coke. So 65% of the workforce is sameness with exception, which means don't change my world. Take the bad stuff away, add good stuff. So in your change messages, growth, evolution, bad stuff go away, good stuff increased. OK? All right. Energetic, we're not going to get there. You need to learn stances. So let me just take a moment. Stances are a way for you to increase your behavioral flexibility. Because most of us are way too predicted, or predictive, predictable. Predictable is a better word. When we're in stress, especially ask your spouse, <laughs> They'll know exactly where you go when you're in stress, OK? So I want you to learn these six stances, and I want you to play with them. And these six stances will help you have more flexibility when you're dealing with those issues, with the motivation, alignment, et cetera. Here's the thing. He or she, with the most flexibility in the system, has the greatest influence, right? He or she with the most flexibility in the system has the greatest influence. Here's how to become more flexible. The first stance is mommy. You've all done this. It's how you talk employees off the ledge, OK? I see you. I see how big and great you are. I'm ready to jump. <laughs> Dude, stay with me here. Let's do this next project together. You know, you're amazing. I get it, OK? Mommy is, oh. The recipient of mommy feels so big, you know? It's important. I've had salespeople on the ledge, you know, and I had to talk them off, you know? Mommy is very effective. Okay, next. Ooh, we'll color code. How fun is that? Okay. Next is the opposite of mommy. I've been working on not swearing as much, so I'm going to leave a blank here for you to fill in. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> 